you real? I'm real enough. I'm still so happy to be joined by Ken Levine, creative director at Irrational Games, here to talk about Bioshock Infinite. Um, one thing that's still, I mean, there's many unique things about this game, but the role of Elizabeth that you have, it's, it's a non-escort game, yeah. but in the narrative, yes, you are escorting her, and there's this character that's with you for 85, 90% of the game. Yeah. Uh, that puts a huge burden on what you guys had to do, just technically, to make her tolerable and to give her some sense of, of, of character, uh, which, which I think you have pulled up with aplomb, but, I mean, that was a huge gamble on your guys' part. Yeah, and, and there were some very dark days where, you know, it's like the shark in Jaws, right? Oh, yeah. If the shark didn't work, and there were plenty of days where she was like the shark. You know, she would bump into walls and, di and fall to the ground and just, did, like, where's Liz? Where That became one of the big questions. Where's Liz? Where's Liz? Where's Liz? She's not there. Um, and, but then, you know, you get her sort of working, and then she's standing there like this. And then she's like, you know, then you're standing on top of a pile of dead bodies, and she makes a joke. And you're like, and all these things that have to work, all these systems have to work together. Because um, basically, she's a simulation of a person. And what I mean by that is not that she's, it's all computer programming, because there is substantial computer programming. But what that programming is really deciding is, we have this giant pool of content, which we wrote, and animation that we created. And, all these heuristical interactions she can have with objects, all these things that could draw her eye and never pay attention to, what post she can lean against. What content should I play now is an incredibly yeah. complicated machine. And then, well, what if the player does, then what if the player who is, you know, the player is notoriously and, and lovably a pain in the ass, you know, how do you make her react to that and not look in a way? How do you make her not run across the player's screen while he's trying to get a shot? How do you make her not like go too creepily close <laughs> so you get freaked out? Um, how do you make her talk too much? How do you make her give you, throw you ammo so she's not giving you too much and it doesn't completely unbalance the game but it still feels really clutch at times? Um, she, was, she was a complicated little, little, little. But then little also problem. you have to get the player to like her if you're gonna spend that much time. And I, I, I do. And I, I think one of the key things that, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is quite evident from the get-go is she's animated in a way that you don't see other characters in games be animated. It reminds me of classic Disney animation. I, I, I know that you had to talk at BAFTA sort of on, on, on this very subject, but the scene where you, well, you kind of drop in on her for, for you know, all <laughs> intents and purposes. Literally. Um, and that, you know, you, you scare her and you frighten her. <laughs> Hello. Ah! It, it really, I've, I've never seen an interaction like that in a game. It has a touch of humor to it, but it's also quite jarring because this is, I mean, it, it, it is a character that's very animated, just hurling books at your head. I mean, how long did you sort of work on that one interaction? Because that really, well, I mean, those first introductions can't be done, you know, over and over again. That scene was actually fairly easy to write. Um, and fairly easy to record. We have that pretty easily. I can't speak to you know how difficult it was to animate it. I think it was tough to get it right and to get like for instance at the beginning like she was throwing those books like a champ and like like you know she was she was like Thor throwing her hand <laughs> that, that just wasn't flying. There's a gym somewhere in the it's tower that she's just pumping on her. <laughs> um, and that wasn't working. And then that moment of. Um, when she stops in that transition, her face as she sees you and starts to make a connection. Wait, wait, there's a person here, and so her fear disappears, and then you know immediately going to the songbird and that whole escape. But um, you know, but then we sort of keep you keep finding new things you have to add, like the 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 um, thimble. The thimble on her was pinky. something we realized we need. And to be honest with you, it's not in the E3 demo, 2011 demo. It's something that we realized we needed it. You know, as a writer, I realized we needed it. Um, fessing up here, it wasn't there. It was something we realized later on that we needed it. Um, and you see, you know, that's an opportunity where you see when she reaches out to you, not when she's reaching out to you, you're getting that thimble right in your face for the first time. And I think a gamer is just gonna notice that because you know, a, thim a thimble on somebody's finger, if you just had a finger missing, half a finger missing, it would look like a bug. Yeah. You know, so you sort of had to. Really so you had to kind of like say, like, no, no, we know this. We know, it's not we know the there's a problem here. And I thought it was kind of charming. That's how that's how she covered it too. Um, was 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 there a point of sort of trying to decide how stylized she would look versus realistic? Yeah. What her age was, how sexualized she, she would actually come across. I mean, how, 
how long did it take for you guys to kind of settle on the representation of, of Elizabeth that is in the game? Um, there are some realities to the story about how old she is, you know, just in terms of when the city was founded. Yeah. And we had, a, we tend to do, these games, we tend to sort of do a timeline um, just to make sure we're not really doing anything stupid that would really break the game. Um, so Elizabeth had to be born sure, shortly after the city of Columbia was created and it makes her around 19. And um, in terms of, you know, we evolved her, you know, look over time in the same way that, um, you know, when you're rewriting, you, you rewrite. There are things that, that struck us as the right way to go and the wrong way to go, and we just kept tweaking her like we tweaked everything else. How about in, 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 in terms of her look? I mean, I think now, having played it, that it wouldn't be right if she looked, I think, more real, for lack of a better word, than she currently does. Yeah. But I could also see the temptation to want to go too far in the other direction yes. and make her look almost like she's a, 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 a 2D cell, cell yeah, animation. Yeah. I mean, was, 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 was there some struggling there? You know, it's tricky because you can, you know, I, the, great, the best example I think of is the movie Up. Um, remember the scene in the movie, you seen Up? Oh, yes, yes. The, where he remembers his marriage. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been married and you love yeah. your wife, it is yes. the most painful thing you could possibly watch. And he's a ridiculous little square. stumpy square. <laughs> and she's another sort of exaggerated, and the whole thing is exaggerated over the top, but boy, does it hit every mm -hmm. every button in a person who who thinks about the inevitability of yeah. what eventually happens to your spouse or you and it's it's so dark and so painful but it was necessary to bring you to that place to, so you could see where he was building up from and so i believe you can get a lot of emotion even out of a somewhat abstract characters um, but i think we struggled to find the right place for her where and where she was where it wasn't distracting, at least for, yeah. for me, you know? But she was exaggerated, so we could read those emotions easier. Um, and look, there's also a notion of, you know, we, you know, the whole notion about, you know, if you were ever at Understanding Comics, you know, they sort of have that thing where you go from a smiley face to a highly detailed picture. And the lower, the, the sort of more abstract the detail is the more people can project. Mm -hmm. into it. So when everybody sees a smiley face, they can all see themselves as potentially that character because there's no detail there. And then if you get a really detailed rendering of George Clooney, I mean, I obviously can see the connection between myself and <laughs> <I'm looking. laughs> um, But, you know, but mo for most people, it, it's, um, you know, you, you, then get di you, you then get distance from that character. So there's all these sort of crazy thoughts, and I don't know how many of them are right and how many of them are wrong. I thought the performance being, you know, Courtney's performance being very natural was, was important. Um, but it, that sort of evolves too over time. She gets to be a lot darker in the beginning. She sort of, there's a formality to her, which is, I think, appropriate for the time um, and her social awkwardness. But it evolves. Well, yeah, I mean, she, she's kind of got the role of princess, but she's probably the most fleshed out, complex princess I've ever seen. She, she doesn't parade around sort of as an icon of what it is. She actually is a character with thoughts and feelings. And, you know, it, it gets very complex and very dark towards the end. Well, as, as technically remarkable as Elizabeth is, there's also the game part. You know, you have the skylines. Once again, something I've not seen before <laughs> inside of a game. And I know there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not at the E3 demo, if that was really happening real time, or if it was scripted, I can happily say I was sure playing around with that a lot. What does that require to build some of those action sequences where you have kind of an enclosed space, but you can move around it quite freely and with remarkable speed? It requires a lot of tweaking. I mean, Adrian Balanon was one of the designers who sort of led that process and worked with some great engineers and great animators um, because it was complicated. The pathfinding challenges were incredibly complicated. Um, and um, I think that to get that right, you really just have to understand the amount of states the player can be in. It has radically increased because you can shoot all your weapons on the skyline. Um, you can do. You have all those powers about you know dodging off and jumping into people. The, that the rate at which you can move is so much higher. So each weapon profile changes about how it affects you and how it how it affects other you know affects others. Um, but you know we showed that and we were really committed. You know look, it's always there's always a part of the gaming audience that's going to be, I think, understandably skeptical that, you know, 
a lot of people say, well, oh, the E3 thing is just the movie and they're never going to do anything even remotely like that. And we were committed to, and that's part of the reason the game took as long as it did, we were committed to making sure that was the game. You know, that, I mean, yeah, we sort of moved this piece here and that piece here, but that, but that was essentially the feel of the game. Um, and we wanted that sort of, we wanted that kind of verticality movement. Irrational has never really done a lot of sort of, you know, we never really focus, Bioshock 1 didn't really focus on movement, and we really wanted yeah. that challenge. And um, so, you know, I think, I think people, people have seemed to respond to it, but it also makes Columbia a much more believable place because it, it has, it embraces the verticality. Well, and, 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 and the other thing is, is, is Dargan is mature and is adult as all these things are that's happening in Bioshock Infinite. You get on the skyline and there's almost this pre-adolescent wonder and thrill that suddenly happens. And it, it really sort of, the, the, the contrast between the two elements, they, they, they work together perfectly, but it almost is this brief respite, like, cool, I'm just I'm flying around as fast as I can holding a gun. I think it's very easy to forget that part of our job is entertaining people. Yeah. You know, and I love, I love, you know, if I can view my life, it would like be reading a Tom Stoppard book on a roller coaster, you know, a Tom Stoppard play on a roller coaster, you know, which is having both those sort of very visceral, you know, I still love ice cream and candy, and, but I also sort of like this kind of stuff too, and I love stupid stuff, and I like smart stuff, I like roller coasters, I like it, all that, and I think that's okay, and I think that you forget that at your peril. We're not, we can very easily become too serious about ourselves, that you start saying like, oh, games should only be about this, or games should only be about that, but games should be about whatever the hell game developer wants to make it about. Um, and the gamer is going to judge what they should be about by their vote with their dollars, right? Um, so I like fun. Yeah, and, 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 and it's definitely in there. Um, Ken, thank you so much on, on that note. Obviously, Bioshock Infinite is, well, imminent in its release. Uh, please keep your eyes peeled here for more coverage of the game and, of course, our review when it's released. Ken, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.